if you're put yourself out there enough, you know, I just I made a, a, a good enough reputation by working hard and playing and doing good shows and whether they were big shows or small shows. And uh, and thankfully, I was that was the one thing I was mature about is is the work ethic and and being grateful and, and playing for your fans, not for yourself and for whoever's there. And so that takes away all the other terrible things about me. And that got me, you know, enough rep to, to get the call and do the, uh, do the gig. Well, I'm glad you mentioned playing for the fans. Can you talk about connecting with the fans? Because you have something, and I know it translates into Superfix as well, but there's something there as a front man that where you, I mean, you're climbing rope ladders, they end up breaking. <laughs> that was unfortunate. Yeah. You're jumping <laughs> off stages. Like, it just doesn't matter, you know? You're like the modern-day David Lee Roth, but then some, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I take that as a serious compliment. Um, it just never occurred to me to, when you're, when you're there, and it's easy to get bogged down in L.A. and get cynical because everybody's, you know, in a band or doing stuff like that, but... Uh, being from where I was from and playing shows where you would drive two hours to see a band and and it was your day and and sometimes in places especially like where I was from where the nearest big city was Spokane Washington which isn't a, an A market you know you and people in in places like the Midwest and especially places around the world like in South America Eastern Europe if they're like when we played with Corn I would, I broke my heel once this was before I broke my ribs on the ladder you know there and I was still doing stuff and eating pills and drinking beer just so I could walk. And I was still jumping off things, and the guy, one of the guys, was like, "Dude, you, you know, you don't need to do that." I was like, "These people don't know or care that I'm not 100 percent. If I don't do 100 percent for them, and give them a show, even if I'm the background guy, I got to give everything I have. Otherwise, I'm not doing my part. And I work three hours a day and get paid well and get to tour. What I'm going to half-ass a show because I feel a little, a little pain? That's bullshit. So." giving the fans what they want and they want to see a train wreck sometimes and they want to hear good music. So I will continue to hurl my body around as long as it allows me to, you know, because they, you know, whether I like them or not, you know, they deserve it. You are insane, my friend. He is insane. Insane. <laughs> and then you got e Eli, got got Eli, so Eli and the band, like you guys are covering it and just letting them go. I, I got to ask, though, because I did see on YouTube uh, that ladder incident, mm -hmm. and somebody said that you fell. It didn't look to us like you fell. It looked like something happened with the mechanism like in broke. that rope ladder yeah. that made it collapse. Well, hopefully this will clear up some with your viewers. Um, it, I did not fall. Um, I, uh, the night before, I was climbing rigging, and I was about 80 feet in the air, hanging upside down with the microphone. You know, I practiced this stuff. Uh, when we're setting up, I'll check everything out. And we were in Mexico City, and that ladder was, um, there's two of those metal rung ladders. Um, one of them is is set, and you can climb it. The other one is fastened by one cord, just as a backup that they'll use later to get the lights and all the other stuff off. Normally, stage right is where the one that's fastened is. In this particular venue, it wasn't, and I did not know that. So I get up there, I start going, and boing! The tape is really hard to see, but this, the stage went was way higher up, and you don't see how far down it goes. It uh, was about, we've averaged it out to about 30 feet. Some people were saying 60, but I don't think I would have been fine. And I hit the concrete and bounced, and it was all slow-mo. The worst thing was seeing the metal ladder coming down oh. and, on my stomach after I'd hit the ground. Oh. So, no, it was not a fall. That was a, a malfunction, and... At the end of the day, it was my fault, but I, you know, I've been doing it for so long, I didn't check that ladder, so I, I made a, a terrible error, and it cost me five ribs. I, I don't think that was your fault, bud. And you were playing the next day. Next day, yeah. How do you didn't do let me that? Jump anything that day? I, I've had bruised ribs. I haven't been able to breathe or move right for a month. How do you do that the it's, next day with oh, my mental <laughs> ribs? It's just mental. Um, fortunately, one of the best things about opera, having the diaphragm control, is you have enough power to get through it. Um, I had them turn up my mic a little louder than usual, and uh, I, I did some little tricks instead of singing full voice on certain things. Um, you know, you just get through it, and... Um, and I and I drank some beer. <laughs> that Actually, medication I, I like a keg. It was the only time I drank hard liquor before uh, a show. Those next few shows, 
I was powering some tequila just to kind of numb me down a little bit. Because wow. in Mexico, ironically enough, my ribs had fused together from the swelling. So in the x-ray, they didn't, this crappy hospital, they didn't even, they forgot me in the x-ray room after it was all dark. And they, they left me for like an hour and a half. Fortunately, I'd rigged my morphine dripper where I could give it to myself. That was a good thing. But they said I didn't break anything. They just said it was bruised. Everything was fine. As the swelling went down the next day, they actually started breaking. Two broke at the same time. I was walking down the hall with Jonathan and, and uh, those bodyguards that uh, I was mentioning at the audition who were friends now, thank God. And it just sounded like, like that wow. echoed. And then I just hit the ground. And uh, over the next, uh, during the show, uh, five ended up breaking. They were already broken, but they separated. And that's the worst part when they actually move. Yeah. But, you know, like I said, the fans don't, it's not the fans' fault that I had an accident, so they still should get a good show. And they did. Dedication. I hope so. I, can't, yeah. I, was pretty, I was pretty tore up, I don't know. But I tried. Nothing you say will 